Ladies and gentlemen, you know, over the last several months, tensions have been growing, especially in areas where migrants have been dumped. And we know New York and Chicago are some of the main places that we have heard about over the last several months. Well, the residents there and the business owners in Chicago are saying they don't feel safe at all with these migrants around. With the city buckling under the growing number of migrants, 12 buses carrying 560 more asylum seekers arrived this weekend, and no sign of the influx slowing down. Tensions among migrants, residents, and business owners are reaching a boiling point. The neighbors said they've witnessed frequent fights, loitering, and other misconduct. While most told the Tribune, this is the Chicago Tribune, by the way, they fully support efforts to aid the migrants. They have grown weary of the city's solution of cramming thousands of people into highly trafficked uh, shelters. And they said they're concerned about their safety, not only for themselves, but the migrants too. I don't think any of us care that there is a shelter there. It's the fact that there are zero attempts to control the situation and we don't feel safe here. So this is one of the business owners um, in Chicago and they're located on Plymouth Court. Our clients don't feel safe anymore. To be sure, migrants committing criminal behavior are a fraction of the more than 15,000 migrants who have poured into the city. Wow, that's how many Chicago has taken from Texas, where Greg Abbott has loaded these people up on buses, you know, they're asylum seekers, and sending them to Chicago. Many of the people seeking asylum said they came for a better life. Though crime stats don't show the marked difference in and around the areas of high volume shelters from prior years, the violent altercations and migrants engaging in lewd activity. And they said they're doing this all out in the open there in Chicago. Mm, mm, mm. And several business owners are complaining. They're complaining about the activity outside of their businesses. They said most nights, large groups of migrants sit and stand while drinking at the park and harassing females passing by. A scene that he says discourages patrons from visiting the restaurant. So they're saying they're losing people. They're losing business, which is known for its location and unique view of the city. The number of visitors at the restaurant, which opens from 4 p.m. until midnight daily, has drastically decreased, going from four to 500 on Thursdays and Fridays, down to roughly 150. We want to help and understand the humanitarian crisis, but this behavior makes it difficult. Um, this is what a business owner is saying. It's a big hit, not just to me, our employees who include a lot of mothers who depend on their job to feed their families. Now there's a camera near the shelter and police patrol throughout the day while the shelter staff members pick up the garbage in the park and around the shelter. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, he's not the only one. They said other business owners are concerned because there's alleged drug exchange, prostitution at the family shelter being operated at the Inn of Chicago. 162 East uh, Ohio Street in a letter they wrote to Mayor Brandon Johnson. 
Hundreds of his constituents and local business owners contacted his office to express their worries, including dirty sidewalks and witnessing migrants engaging in physical altercations outside of the shelter. Yeah, I I was reading about two weeks ago how at the shelters, these migrants are breaking out in fights with each other. They're getting in these big brawls with each other at the shelter. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. So they said that um, I am sympathetic to the new arrivals situation and support Chicago being a welcoming city. However, these are serious concerns that need to be addressed immediately. At the time, the Department of Family and Support Services responded to the letter explaining that the newcomers must sign a contract agreeing to shelter rules and promising to be a good neighbor. The letter also said the department was collaborating with the city entities, including the police department, to address concerns, which include specialized patrolling, and recommended beat officers. Despite the heightened police presence around the facility, the problems persist, especially those times of CPD cannot be there. This is according to the Tribune. Maria has been staying at the end of, in of Chicago, one of the most and this is one of the most largest shelters they have in the city for migrants for several months. Uh, recently, she said the shelter staff held a meeting to warn migrants of the littering, fighting, and congregating it did not stop. They could be forced out. But some people don't care. They leave their garbage everywhere. They fight inside and outside of the shelter. Now, they're fighting primarily each other. So I guess they're not getting along. And this is not the only place. I've heard about the stories also happening in Chicago where they're breaking out in all these big fights, these migrants. So anyway, um, you know, even after the shelter apparently addressed the problems, it, it, the problems continue on. It's concerning to us because we don't want to get kicked out of the shelter while we find an apartment to rent. Maria, a single mother from Venezuela, we didn't want to, she didn't want to give her last name. Okay, so I, I understand. So anyway, uh, we supposedly came here to become uh, you know, to become better and to progress. But the allegations of drug use, violent altercations inside and outside of the shelter are unfortunate, are true, she said. We see it. The reports of violence and criminal activity have added another problematic layer to the city's migrant crisis beyond the immediate needs of the shelter and food. While Chicago leaders last week rejoiced at the news that President Joe Biden will grant temporary legal status to hundreds of thousands of Venezuelans uh, who have crossed into the U.S., advocates cautioned the process will take months to trickle down to the migrants. It will benefit frustrations that are being voiced is the same as one that you're hearing from the elected officials here. So if you don't have work authorization, you're not able to get people to work and find a place to live, then when you put two to 300 people undocumented or not in one building with nothing to do, there's going to be a percentage of them that will get frustrated and just being there and they will go outside in the area and engage in criminal activities. Well, all of this should have been thought out before letting them come here. 
but apparently they don't think about anything. So this is Alderman Lamont J. Robinson fourth, whose ward include the shelter at the former Standard Club that said his office has worked directly with the business owners along with the mayor's office, the police, and the shelter staff to ensure a coordinated and comprehensive approach. As we confront these difficulties head on, we've adopted innovative strategies to effectively address unique issues we're encountering. This is what Robinson said. A recent change that has helped to manage the situation has been closing the park at 9 p.m. rather than 11 p.m. This way, migrants are also encouraged to go inside the shelter earlier rather than wait for curfew, said the chief of staff. Mm -mm -mm. They got a mess on their hands and it's even worse. You know, I got a story that I might do. New York is thinking about just throwing the migrants out of all shelters as a means to deter them from coming there. And it seems like they're going to move forward with that. They're just going to do one big sweep of throwing them all out to the streets. And we already know they won't have anywhere to go. Now, I don't know. I'm just saying that might not be a wise way of handling it, but that's what they're brainstorming about up in New York. Taking their place to stay away from them. Y'all tell me what you think. Boy, y'all got a problem on your hands in Chicago. And they said the majority of these people are from Venezuela, the ones that are in Chicago. So y'all tell me what you think about this video. And if you're from Chicago, let me know if you even see these people in the city where you live. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.